ladder, the vision, the dream of the ladder that Jacob saw. We read from Genesis 28, beginning with verse 10. Jacob left Beersheba and set off for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. In a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on earth with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you, your, I will give you and your descendants the land in which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you and go wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from this dream, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than a house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as an altar and poured oil on it. He called that place Bethel. Well, the city is used to being called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God be with me and I will, and will watch over me on this journey I am taking, I will give it, and give me food and to eat and clothes to wear, so I have returned safely to my father's house. Then the Lord will be my God, and the stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And all that you give me, I will give you a tent. This is God's word. Dear friends in Christ, as we think of the episode with Jacob here, he had just deceived his father. He had come up with this plot with his mother, angered his brother. And now his mother says, quick, get out of here. Your brother's angry. Your brother's going to kill you. And away he goes, go off to my family there back in Haran. Journey was at least 500 miles. And Jacob now takes off to find his relatives. You think of Jacob. Jacob was the one who stayed home. He was the homebody. He wasn't the one that went out hunting. That was his brother Esau. He was the burly one. He would go out there days on end looking for game, and his father so enjoyed it when he'd bring back some food for him from his hunt. He was the one out there. So now, one day out, into who knows where, probably never really been gone from family for any period of time, and now he was off to make this trip. Could you imagine what that first night was like? What have I gotten myself into? What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen along the way? Am I going to be safe? Am I going to run into vicious animals? Am I going to run into terrible people that want to take my life? What's going to happen to me? And what have I done to myself? I've, I've deceived my father. <laughs> my brother hates me. I can't be at home anymore. What will become of me? And then, why me? <laughs> why me? Um, I, I'm not used to this kind of stuff. I'm not used to roughing it in the outdoors. This is not me. My brother, him. Send him away. Send him to Aaron. He is used to this. This would be an adventure. This would be a, a camping trip. This would be an outing. This would be why well, he'd love it. But for me, does God have unique situations for you? Are there times when you question yourself and you say, why is God allowing all this to happen in my life? There's certainly other people who can bear up under this a lot better than I can. I just can't handle this. I can't take any more. What, what, what am I going to do? And we learn to understand that God has unique situations for every one of us. Jacob was an interesting character, wasn't he? He was so used to scheming and getting at things that he wanted by manipulating. His brother's hungry one day, and he's famished, and he, and he says, Ah, now's my chance to get that birthright. That birthright would go to him. But I'm gonna, I've got him right where I want him now. Okay, if you want some food, and you can see him stirring it there, you want some food, give me your birthright. Da, what's my birthright? He still says, give me something to eat. He digs in. And now, 
My father wants to bless him. What are we going to do now? Oh, we come up with this idea with we'll some hairy things in your arm there. You look, we'll put some smell on you so you smell like the outdoors and such, and your father won't ever know the difference. Just go on in there. All that plotting and figuring and conniving got into this. And so when we think about in our lives too, you know, what, what do I do? I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to handle this. But yet, God was using that to prepare Jacob. Hope it it would take another good 20 years plus for Jacob to really learn because he was still up to his old conniving ways even when he would come back. Remember if he was figuring out, how am I going to meet my brother now after all these years? Uh, I'll send my, all the other ones away and I'll go there myself. And again, plotting and deceiving and, and conniving. The Lord now, in this vision, he is standing up at the top and, and Jacob is in this dream. He sees the stairway, this ladder to heaven and angels ascending and descending. He sees the Lord up there. And really that's the point of this, isn't it? He said, I am the God of your father Abraham, the God of Isaac. And now later on, how does that go? You know, years later, I am the God of your father Abraham, your God of your father Isaac, your God of your father Jacob. Ah, Jacob. Jacob yet had not understood God as, as his Lord and his father, his Savior, hadn't he? He was used to getting everything he wanted, his own way and such, and, and God now was taking this individual and was shaping and forming him. You, we'd look at that and you'd say, you know, what an individual you'd have for someone that's supposed to, you know, we're supposed to look at his faith and emulate him. He, he, was, he, was, he was, you couldn't trust a word out of his mouth. He was a deceiver. He was a con man. He got his way that way. And yet the Lord... Never once, in all this conversation with him, never once talks about that. Jacob, what kind of man have you been? What did you do to your father? What did you do to your... No, never once. God always comes to us in grace. That's, Jacob couldn't understand that yet. And that was going to take a long time for the Lord to shape and to mold him into the person that the Lord wanted him to be and the Lord would make him into. And that was about to happen. And the same question then can be asked of ourselves. Is the Lord your Lord? Have you made the Lord your Lord? You cannot make the Lord your Lord until you first of all make him your Savior. When you understand that he lived and died for you, when you understand that every moment of his life here on earth he lived for you, Every trial, every temptation, every struggle he had, he did for you. Every drop of blood that flowed from his hands and his feet, his side, dripped for you and for me. We make the Lord our Savior. We realize, Lord, I have sinned against you in my thoughts and my words and my actions. I deserve nothing but your eternal punishment. Lord, save me. And the Lord reassures us of his forgiving love. Everything I did, I did for you. Now, live for me. Let me live in you. Let me guide you. Let me guide your actions. Jacob had not gotten to that point yet. The promise of, of God's blessing to his fathers and such, that was still something he thought he could wheel and deal for. He thought that was something he could manipulate. Ah, the more intelligent person gets it. You know, Esau, he's just kind of a dummy. He's out there in the woods all the time. Because for me, I'm, I'm conniving. And to the better man, he gets it and so on. No. Jacob was about to learn a lot of lessons in his life. And they always kept on bringing him back to the grace of God. And that's the same way for us in our lives. Everything brings us back to the grace of God. Everything brings us back to the cross. There, I live and I die for you, the Lord says. My life is yours. And so we make the Lord our, 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 our make, make, make Jesus our Lord. Lord, live in me. Guide my actions. Let the struggles, let the trials, whatever they may be, let them be for, for my glory, for my joy. 
you know, the answer of, of Jacob as he sees the angels ascending and descending, the Lord speaking there, uh, he gets up and, and you see uh, it's like the old deer in the, head, in the headlights type of thing. He doesn't know what to do. Oh, wow, you know, the Lord's here. Wow. Um, 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 this rock. Um, well, of course, well, not. Um, and, and you get to see the confusion as to, you know, he's just amazed to at, at uh, what was happening here. And in our lives, too, sometimes we are amazed at the love of God. For such, a, for such a wretch like me. He gave his life for me. But Jacob can't help being Jacob, can he? If I go, and I have enough to eat, and I have clothes on my back, and I get back here one day, then, then, uh, then, then, Lord, you are my Lord. We all want to bargain with God, don't we? If I do this, Lord, do this. If I do this, if I, if, I, if I pray a lot, if I do a lot, you know, um, you'll do this, right, Lord? You know, we, we get tongue-tied and we fumble about too, not knowing how to address God and such, where the Lord says, I am with you always. I will be with you every day. When we make Jesus our Lord, we realize, you know, he's my Lord right now. He's my Lord this afternoon. He's my Lord tomorrow morning when I get up for work. He's my Lord when I'm in my study hall or in the cafeteria, messing around with my friends. He's my Lord on Friday evenings, Saturday evenings. He's my Lord every day of the week, every moment of every day. Not because I did all kinds of wonderful things that he would want to reward me in such a way that he would be with me and love me and give his life for me. But out of his grace, out of his mercy. No, it's not a matter if you do this, Lord, then I will do that. We don't bargain with the Lord. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, you and I do that our Lord has not done already for us. There is nothing we can give to him. There is nothing we can offer to him that isn't already his. And so we pause to reflect, Lord, what have you given to me? Look what you have given to me. You've given me everything. I sit back and I look at that without any effort on my part, without me lifting a finger, without me doing anything. You did all this for me. Your blood spilt for my forgiveness. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. And, and who can even begin to understand the enormity of that word? Jacob, I will be with you every step of the way. Do you apply that to yourself? I am with you every moment of every day. I am watching over, I am guarding, I am keeping. And yes, when those evil days come, I am there, Lord, to be with you. Because as we go back to the beginning of this sermon, we are unique to the Lord, each of us. And the Lord has his unique trials and challenges that he places before us all so that he can mold and shape us into the person he has made us. He made us to serve him. He made us to love him. He made us to be the recipients of his love. And he pours that into us, and he, and he, and he works and shapes. Ah, some of us are tougher projects, aren't we? We want to kick and scream and resist the Lord, and uh, we don't want to offer ourselves to Him and our our lives to Him and serve Him. We want to we want to be hands off to a point, you know. I don't want to get and and, uh, and the Lord is patient. Yeah, I'm just amazed at, at the whole incident here. It, it, there was never Jacob, Jacob. What have you done? It was always I remind you of who you are of what you are. You are my dear child. You are mine. And that's what he says to each one of us. Every day he says that. You are mine. Go out into my vineyards now. Serve me. Go out love me. Let your love show. 
Let your love be a witness of my love for you. Let my love motivate your actions. So everything that I do is done out of a, out of a, a sense of, of, of service and love and joy for my Lord. Let him fill you with that peace that goes beyond all understanding. When Jacob woke, it was amazing. Yeah, I didn't even realize you were here. Do we sometimes feel that way? Lord, why have you left me? Lord, why have you abandoned me? Lord, what, don't you hear me? Can't you hear my cry? Can't you, I, I cried for help and you didn't help and you weren't there. <coughs> There's the Lord standing on top of the ladder looking down and said, never left. Never left. Trust me. Believe in me. All that I have is yours. Jacob would be a work in progress as are each of us. But the more we appreciate just what the Lord and his love did for us, the more we appreciate that he lived every moment for us, and the more that we see in his cross our forgiveness and see our need and recognize our need without always trying to play this, this cunning little game with the Lord and, and such as, oh, you know, I don't need you all the time, but it's good to have you there once in a while to really appreciate that, then we fully appreciate it, then we fully understand the love of God that fills our hearts, and then our hearts flow with a love for him as well. Amen.